Hi everybody, welcome back to week one of Pharmacy Calculations. We're going to pick up where we left off, which was talking about ratios. Um, we're going to go in and look at a, a few examples of ratios. Remember what we said, that ratios are a comparison of two quantities, two units of measurement. So here's some examples, specifically in pharmacy. We have a cough syrup containing two milligrams of a drug in every five mils of syrup. And you can see we wrote that as two milligrams over five mils. Now we could write that the other way. In other words, we could write it um, with five mils on top, but normally we will see it written with the milliliters on the bottom and the milligrams on top. Our second example is 75 tablets contain three milligrams of drug. Again, we typically see the milligrams first, but we don't have to write it that way. In this case, we wrote three milligrams over 75 tablets. Three milligrams contained 75 tablets is another way you might say that. Okay, let me mark my pen and we will continue. Okay, so here's a few more examples. This one says, in every five mils of ferrous sulfate elixir, there is 220 milligrams of ferrous sulfate. So we could write this as 220 milligrams. And excuse my pen, it's kind of sloppy when you're writing with this online. So 220 milligrams over five milliliters. Again, we typically put the volume on the bottom but we could write it the other way. It would mean the exact same thing. Here's the second one. An ophthalmic solution contains one milligram of dexamethasone per milliliter of solution. Notice there's no number in front of this milliliter. So we know that that means one. So when it says per milliliter, we assume that's one milliliter. So this is one milligram over one milliliter. Okay, our next example. We have a tablet containing 325 milligrams of medication. Notice on this one I wrote the 325 on top, tablet on bottom. And we could always switch this and write it the other way around. One tablet contains 325 milligrams. The same way with the second example, 250 milligrams are contained in each capsule. Each does mean one, so even though it's not written as one, we can put that one in there and it means the same thing. So 250 milligrams per one capsule. Here's some examples of things you might see on an actual drug label and you can look for those ratios there. Our first one is fluoxetine oral solution, and you'll notice the strength per milliliter is written right here in the center. This one is 20 milligrams per five milliliters. So that means there's 20 milligrams of drug in every five milliliters of solution. This second one is a little bit different. This one actually contains two drugs. It contains propoxyphene napsylate and acetaminophen. And this ratio right here tells us how much of each is in each tablet. So the 100 is the amount of propoxyphene napsylate and the 650 is the amount of acetaminophen in each tablet. So each tablet contains two medications. Another little side note on this one is this letter C off to the side. This is actually uh, a black and white picture, but if this were in color, this C would be in red. The I and the V in the center tells us it's a class four narcotic. So anytime you have a narcotic, that letter C is gonna be in red and the number in the middle is gonna tell you what level it is. Okay, now, we are going to use ratios to solve pharmacy problems, um, specifically those word problems that you're seeing on this week's assignment. But before we do that, we need to just know how to solve a proportion in general. So what we're gonna look at is proportions, which are just two ratios 
that are equal to each other. And we're going to look at how we solve those before we look at how we solve them in pharmacy. So our first example is written in ratio format. It's got those colons in the middle. So the first set, 3 over 6, can be written as a fraction, 3 over 6. So 3 to 6 is written as 3 over 6. The double colon indicates equals. So that's why there's an equal sign here in the middle. And then the 2 to n can be written as 2 over n. So once we take that ratio format and rewrite it as a fraction, we're ready to do cross multiplication. Cross multiplication means we're going to multiply the things across from each other. So 3 times n is going to go on one side. So there it is. That equal sign stays in the middle. And then we have 6 times 2 on the other side. I like to think of proportions as teeter-totters. You have to keep everything equal on both sides. Just like the old-time teeter-totters in the playground, if somebody jumps off on one side, it's not going to be very good for the people on the other side. So that's how proportions work. You have to keep everything balanced. So that's why we keep that equal sign in between the two pieces. Now we're ready to get rid of the number with the letter. And the way we do that is we do the opposite of what's going on. So the opposite of multiplying by 3 is going to be to divide both sides by 3. So that's what this next step shows. We divide this side by 3 and we divide the other side by 3. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other to keep that teeter-totter balanced. And how do we know what we divide by? It's whatever is with the letter. So since it's a 3 with the letter, that's what we're going to divide both sides by. Notice these 3's are going to go away because one's on top and one's on bottom. So all that's left is 12 over 3 we can put that in our calculator, and that's where our final answer of 4 comes from. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. Remember, pop it into your calculator if you're not sure. Okay, let's try another one. Here's another example. We have 3 to 8, and we wrote, rewrote it as 3 over 8. The double colon is the equal sign and 5 to n is on the other side. Cross multiplication gives me 3 times n and then 8 times 5. We're going to divide both sides by whatever is with that letter. So dividing both sides by 3. 8 times 5 was 40. We have to divide that by 3 and when we do, we get 13.3. And that 3 keeps repeating, and I just opted to round it to the nearest tenth on this, on this problem. Okay, let's look at another. Now, we have 4 to 9. So we're going to write that as 4 over 9. That double colon is my equals and then n over 81. Now we're ready for cross multiplication. Remember, it's a teeter-totter, so we have to keep everything balanced. So one side's going to be 4 times 81. So 4 times 81 keep that equal sign in the middle. The other side is going to be 9 times n, or write it as just 9n. When you pop 4 times 81 into your calculator, you're going to get 324 equals that 9n. Remember, we're going to divide both sides. And how do we know what we divide by? We divide by whatever is with that letter. So since the 9 is what's with the letter, that's what we're going to divide by. 
So I'm going to pop that in my calculator. 324 divided by 9 is going to give me 36. So 36 is what is equal to n. That's a 3, guys. <laughs> I will rewrite that for you. A 36. All right. So 36 is what is equal to n. All right. So these are all examples of solving with proportions. These are important because we're going to use them to solve our pharmacy problems as well. So in pharmacy, we can use these to convert between units of measure. Specifically, the units of measure we use in pharmacy are the metric system, the apothecary system, and the household system. The metric system is meters, liters, grams, those units of measure. The household system is probably one you're most familiar with. That's things like teaspoons, tablespoons, quarts, pints, cups, those kinds of things. And the apothecary system is an old time system that you don't usually see much anymore, but we do have a few units that we will convert. Things like grams, I mean grains, sorry about that, grains, um, minims, uh, those are the typical apothecary units that you will see. Now, in your textbook, and as we go through this program, we will talk about conversion factors. And those conversion factors are those things that will always be the same. For example, one teaspoon is always going to be equal to five milliliters everywhere doesn't matter where you go it's the same so those truths are what we use to set up proportions and solve for the missing pieces in pharmacy so we're going to use those truths to solve for some missing pieces so make sure you have chapter 12 and 13 handy I'm going to be referring to some of those conversion factors as we go through some examples here are some of those from chapter 13, just to kind of refresh your memory. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. One cc is one milliliter. One milligram is 1,000 micrograms. One fluid ounce is 30 mils. Make sure you're using that one. <laughs> one teaspoon is five mils. One tablespoon is 15 mils, one kilogram, 2.2 pounds. These are just some of the common ones. There are a lot of others in chapter 13, but just some of the ones we'll see most frequently. Okay, so we have a few steps that we're going to do when we are converting units. We're going to start by writing your question as a fraction on one side of the proportion. Our second step is to write information that is given in the problem as a relationship on the other side of the proportion. If we don't have any other information in the problem, that's when we need to go to our conversions. So we'll write the conversion as a relationship. And then we're going to solve using cross multiplication. So again, Make sure you write these steps down. Make sure you're following these for all conversions. And on our next segment, we will actually start doing some of these conversion problems. Good luck.